Okay, once we have our basket and we've already got our apples created too, I want to take the basket and place the apples in them. But as you can see, I've got these placed in here in this basket. But doing this without some physics simulation would be kind of difficult to make sure nothing uh, collides with each other and that everything is placed randomly in there. So what I did was I went ahead and used actual physics calculations to place those apples in there. So essentially I took the apples, put them up here, and dropped them into the basket. And the physics figured out the rest. So this is a really cool way to model things randomly. And uh, let me show you how to use it. It's all built into 3 Studio Max. I'll show you how to use it and you can use your own imagination and figure out other ways to creatively use the built-in physics to animate things but also to just place things in your scene. So let's get started here. First thing we want to do, let's close all this for now and I'll show you my process. First thing we want to do is bring our basket and our apples into the same scene. Of course we can do that by going to merge. So import, merge, you can navigate to our basket, merge it in. There it is. Let's move it into place. Okay, there's our basket. And then we can merge in an apple. Okay, going to import, merge. Let's find our apple. Okay, here's our apples. Let's change the appearance of them. We don't need this apple. Let's make sure that this is Let's turn down the turbo smooth some. So it's just our simple apple. Actually, let's leave it right there. That should be fine. Now let's collapse it down, convert to a poly, and attach the little stem as another poly. First option is great. Okay. There we go. Okay, so now we've got the apple. I'm going to change the appearance of it a little bit so that that normal map is no longer showing. That was just a test anyway. So let's make sure that's turned off by unchecking here. And then instead, let's show the diffuse map on our object, oh, making sure we're adjusting the right one. Here we go. Okay, apple, bump is off, diffuse is showing. So there we go, there's our apple, looks great. Okay, this is what I was showing you earlier, I'm recreating it over here. One thing that's gonna be important is, this is our zero plane right here. And we're actually gonna use that in our physics calculation. So what we wanna do is actually place our basket up so that the, ba the bottom of the basket is right at that ground plane because our physics calculation will actually take that ground plane into account and it'll be set at zero zero so when our apples are falling out of the sky into our basket they will stop at this zero zero mark right there so we want the basket to be in the right place now you might notice that i had these odd rectangles around my basket here those are basically set up as just collision objects so that the apple knows not to go out of the basket. And you might wonder why we can't just make a simple cylinder or just use the basket as our collision object. And the answer to that is that collision objects have a hard time calculating properly when the hull is concave like this. Okay, so there's other ways to do this and you can fidget with it to get it to work right. But the easiest way is just create an object around the basket, make it a collision object, so that the apples cannot escape the basket. Okay, so let's just do it like that, and I'll show you a little bit more about what I'm talking about as we go along here. So let's just create a box, convert it to edit poly. In the front view, let's make sure that it goes up high enough to keep our apples in the basket, and down low enough to collide with the ground plane. Top view again. Let's place it in the center. We can use our align tool again. Let's align with this center, but only in the Y position so that we know it's perfectly centered here. Okay, now we can take and go into the hierarchy tab again and affect pivot only. And let's align again in all positions this time. Okay, now go out of effect pivot only. And now let's rotate that around and copy like we did when we were creating our basket. That's 30 degrees right there, which goes into 360 nicely. 12 times, I believe. Let's make it a copy and number of copies, 11. There we go. Makes a perfect circle around our basket. Seems like a little bit odd way to do it, but 
I've had problems whenever I try to use a different kind of shape that's concave to calculate my physics because like I said it always hits the top and and calculates incorrectly from there on out. You could get it to work if you want to mess with it for a while. I found this to be easier. So let's take this, right click, hit select similar. It will select all those rectangles. And then what we need to do is set this up for physics. So the easiest way to do that is to open our physics toolbar by right clicking in a blank space on our toolbars, like right there, and make sure that mass FX toolbar is checked. You can see that that now brings up a whole new toolbar and let's just drop it up here and it'll dock up there. Okay, now with all these selected, we can go to this button here and hit set selected as static rigid body. These aren't gonna move, they're just gonna be static rigid bodies. And you can see that it now put these little, you can see this little cage around it now, which is the actual collision object. If you go into each one of these, you'll see that there's a modifier of mass effects rigid body. So you could apply that by going into the modifier tab as well. But with the toolbar, we did it all at once, which is great. So here is where it has shape type. We have it set to box. This is a box, so it's perfect. You can, this is where you could set it to concave or capsule shape or sphere shape. And this is what I was talking about with concave. Uh, sometimes, sometimes it struggles to get the collision object just right with a concave shape. So with all these boxes just surrounding the basket, that's great. And for the bottom, the collision object will just be the ground plane itself, which is at zero, zero. So with all these set up, let's now place some apples. And you got to think of this as uh, dropping a bunch of apples into the basket. And that's what the computer is going to do for us. Let's make sure that it's sitting over the top of the basket. Like so. And then what we're going to do is copy some around. Copy. Copy. Try to copy them kind of randomly. Go to the front view. Drag some of them down, some of them up. This will help so they fall pretty randomly. Okay, copy. Now let's do a whole other layer of these up here, making sure they're not intersecting each other. Okay, that looks like enough apples and they're all sitting over the top of our basket. Let's take all these, create these as set dynamic rigid bodies because these will need to interact and hit other objects and interact with them using physics. Now you can see the cages around these are pretty close to correct. It's using the original mesh to figure out the cage, the collision cage. The only part where it's a little funky is with the stem, but that will actually work out okay, I believe, as we calculate all this. So you can see it looks kind of like what I had set up over here. Now with this toolbar, we can click on this here, and it brings up our, our kind of uh, dialog box. From here we have all our settings. So ground height is set at zero, and we are using ground as collisions. That's why we put the basket where we did. The gravity acceleration is all default. We're using actual gravity set at the uh, physically accurate gravity type. Here we have all the settings for doing our simulations. Here you can, like in the modifier tab, you can also adjust your rigid body properties here. So these are all dynamic, as you can see. If we select these, they're going to be static. But it's similar to the settings we have over here. So everything's pretty much set up right now. Let's go back into our simulation tools and hit simulate. Okay, you can see my other setup up here probably worked a little better, but our new setup worked up well too. Looks like we just need more apples. So what we can do is go back. We can reset the simulation. Let's go back to the front view. Let's just put a whole bunch of apples in here. Let's copy have twice as many and let's simulate again nice okay now we got a whole bunch of apples in there I think that's perfect 
Now let's select all these. Whoop, one thing we forgot to do. Let's get that simulation again, and then we can bake all. Okay, that's now baked into our simulation, and you can see that's an actual animation, which is cool. Since we're just placing these objects, so you can see as you scrub along here, you can see different levels of that simulation going on, so that you can make video out of by rendering an animation. But what we actually want to do is just capture one still shot of this. So right here, we can just grab all this. It's one way to do it. And then we can just select all these keyframes, delete them like that. So I'm just swiping across that and hitting delete. You can see the ones on the left still have it. If I were to select all those, delete all the keyframes, then that would go away. But here, over here, we have exactly what we want. We have these all nicely placed in our basket. And it did it a lot more accurately, accurately than we would be able to, because for us it'd be hard to make sure nothing is intersecting with each other. So now let's right click on one of these objects and hit select sim similar. We can just delete. Whoops, we deleted our deleted more than we wanted to. You just go through and delete all these. And we've got our objects and our apples placed just perfectly in our little basket. Let's go to our front view and make sure there's no problems. Looks like they did go down a little bit too far, and this one is intersecting the outside of the basket. So it's not perfect, but it's close. And trust me, trying to do this manually would take forever, and you wouldn't get it nearly as good. So this is a good way to do it. Let's select similar on that apple, move them up just a little bit, and then this one we can move over a little bit. So we'll do a little bit manually, but you don't want to place all these manually, trust me. And there might be some slight intersections going on in there with other apples. That'll be okay, I believe. I don't think it's anything that we'll see that will ruin our scene. So if we wanted to clean that up with the physics a little bit, we'd put those rectangle boxes a little closer and tighter in. But I think right now we have a great basket full of apples, which is awesome. Let's delete the rest of this stuff. We don't need any of this. We don't need this ground plane. Here is our basket full of apples and it's ready for being added into our scene. Oh, there's one more apple here that's got a little bit of overlap with the wire going on. Let's clean that up just like that. A couple others that you can go through, clean up very carefully. And we're good to go. Looks like we missed a wire mesh here. Must have deleted that on accident. So I'll get that back in there. But overall, I think our basket's looking pretty cool and ready to add back into our scene. Okay, there we go. We gotta put some materials on it, but our apples are placed nicely. So that's how physics work, a little bit about it. You can use it for all sorts of different things. And it's really cool, it works quite well, and it's very nice to have it just built straight into Max and have its own toolbar and everything. And as you can see, it's pretty straightforward to use. So that's a little bit about Mass Effects physics.